Hey everyone and welcome to the Retro Channel and today we are checking out a piece of hi-fi gear. This is a Technics SLPG100 CD player from the early 90s and this particular model has been one I've been looking for for a while. Uh, my brother had one of these when we were growing up uh, and it was actually the first CD player that we had in the family home. So uh, it's a bit of nostalgia involved in this one but naturally this thing is not working. It was sold on eBay as faulty, not reading discs. So uh, let's just power it on and see what it does. Here we go. All right, well, there is some life in it. Ah, no free disc though. So, let's throw in a random CD. Ooh, it's a little bit grindy on the CD sled. And I'm hearing no noise at all from any of the motors. So, no signs of life from the CD assembly. Uh, let's pop this thing open, take a look inside. All right, it looks like we have two screws either side and one screw at the back. One thing it is lacking is any digital audio output. Uh, maybe we can hack that in at some point. Uh, but yeah, it certainly makes up for it with all of these synchro edit functions, which basically made recording CDs to tape really easy, along with the peak search, which finds the highest level of audio across the entire CD. So you can set the right audio recording level on your cassette deck. These are in the days before the loudness wars really kicked off. So audio CD mastering was at various volume levels. It wasn't just cranked all the way to the max. And I've just noticed that this screw is a little bit skewed. So I think somebody has been in here and hasn't put that screw back in correctly. Came out all right though. All right, with the screws removed, the top should just come off. Now, I vaguely remember the one that we had did stop reading discs at some point. Uh, I think I even took the cover off and tried to fix it, but at that point I had no idea what I was doing and I was probably armed with a little crappy analog multimeter and unless something had obviously exploded or was burnt up, I probably wouldn't have had a chance of fixing it. So I guess in a way I'm kind of killing two birds with one stone, a little bit of nostalgia and a little bit of redemption. Looking around the board, we can see that there are some unpopulated areas. Uh, this area here says except PG100. So uh, whatever this is, uh, obviously isn't included on this model. I think there's also the PG200, which came with a remote control, which this one does not. And I think it has a direct headphone output on the front, which obviously this model also doesn't have. And then we have, oh, there is, unpopulated area right at the back here for digital audio out. So, um, well, might investigate that. And it says only PG300E. So I think that's the highest end model in this series. And obviously that came with digital audio out and the other features from the uh, PG200. And I think the 300 also has a numeric keypad along the bottom of the display here, which obviously this model does not. But of course, there's no point in looking at any of that now because we don't have a functional CD player. So let's start with that. I'm just gonna plug it back in, power it on. So the actual loading mechanism seems okay. And it at least appears to detect that the drawer is closed, but uh, obviously there's going to be a little switch in here to tell it when the drawer is actually open or closed. So it could be something going on with that. Uh, there's also the laser assembly will have basically a track one sensor or when it's all the way in closest to the spindle. And uh, that's going to be a little switch in there as well. So probably start with those things. Let's rip off this lid here and just see if the laser is actually trying to do anything at all. Right, well, the first thing I can see is the laser is not up against the spindle. So I don't think we're looking at a dirty lens or anything. In theory, that should move in as soon as you put a disc in. So it could be an issue with the drawer switch. It might think the drawer is still open. Might be an issue with the uh, laser switch for track one. So it might think that it's already sitting at track one. So yeah, when the drawer's closed, the laser doesn't move and it's also not bobbing up and down to try and read a disc. So um, there doesn't seem to be any signs of life in that. Let's uh, continue pulling this down. In fact, before we do that, let's just check some voltages. So it looks like this does have a linear power supply, but this machine is live. So if you don't know what you're doing, don't go poking around with uh, potential mains voltage. And there is a lot of text around this ribbon label, including some underneath. So I'm going to power off the unit and we're just going to unplug this, which looks like it just pulls out. 
to power it back on, see if we've got those voltages. So apparently we should have five volts on pin three, I think, or pin four. Yeah, there's five volts there, and there's 7.5 volts, ooh, 7.13. So it says we should have 7.5 volts there. I'm seeing 7.13. That might not be a big deal. Uh, and the rest of it just looks like data signals, but at least we know voltage is there. So that's the first start. Let's plug this back in and we'll try and find these switches. All right, so I think the first thing to do is try and get this sled out of the way. So looks like we just need to undo this screw. Oh, come on. Nice. Okay, so what I do see is a couple of switches down here. So uh, let's just power this back up and see if they do anything. So at the moment, the motor's just running, so it either thinks the door's open or closed. And pushing that switch has stopped it. But who knows if it thinks that's the open position or the closed position. And releasing that switch, now it's not doing anything. Closing the other switch doesn't seem to do anything. And if we close both, still nothing. So it might be an issue with these switches, but uh, we need to get to the actual contacts to see if that's the case. So let's just continue removing screws. Progress, maybe. Right. Right, well, at least now we have access to those two switches so we can test them. And uh, we might have to dig a little bit deeper to find the uh, track one sensor switch. Or maybe you could call it the track zero or, or maybe table of contents sensor switch. Ah, track one sensor, that's fine. All right, well, the first switch appears to be fine. Well, the second switch is a little bit all over the place. We're getting 50 to 100 ohms. Yeah, that's not good. Oh, now it's down to three. A little bit of contact cleaner in there, I think might help. They look to be pretty well sealed, so I'm hoping I can just Drop some down in the top and it'll work its way through. Give it a little workout. Right, let's see if that made any difference. Oh yeah, that looks better. Straight down to one point something ohms. And the other one, yep, they're happy. Will that fix our problem? Who knows, let's find out. Somehow don't think it's gonna be that easy. All right, let's power on. So we get our motor spinning, so it thinks the door's open or closed. Let's try the first one. That stopped, but no activity from the laser. We'll try the second one. And also no activity. All right, so I've just powered it off again. Let's just make sure those signals are getting over to the board here. Right, that's one of the switches, which is working. I think the other one is on this. Yep. Okay. That part's working. So I think we can rule out any issues with the switches. They both seem to cause some kind of behavior when they're open or closed, and they both appear to be working just fine. So next step is going to be trying to find the switch on the laser block, which could be a bit of a challenge. Ah, uh, and I think I've just worked out how the switches work. So I think this one gets activated when the drawer gets closed. And then when it brings the laser assembly up, it activates the other one. So I think they should both be closed and that should tell it, you know, start trying to read a disc. And these posts do not want to come out. I think they're clipped from the underside, which isn't accessible unless I take this board off. Yeah, delicate procedure. There's a clip here. Oh, 
How far in can we get? Not very. All right, I might be able to disconnect the laser mechanism. Okay. And if we look right down in there, we can see where our track one sensor switch is. I've just stuck a couple of resistor leg offcuts in this connector just so I can go hands free. And that sensor is also working. Uh, it'd really only be a problem if it was reading closed when it was open, but um, yeah, that seems to be working just fine. So it still seems like kind of a logic issue because you'd expect a laser block to actually move into the center once the drawer's closed, but uh, it is certainly not doing that. Looking at the other connector, it looks like we have the sled motor on the left two pins and the spindle motor on the right two pins. So let's reassemble this and we'll check some voltages on there. In fact, better yet, let's just substitute our own, see if those motors are actually working. So let's send three volts into the spindle motor. Oh yeah. Doesn't sound great, but it is working and it's drawing 15 milliamps at three volts, so it uh, doesn't seem to be any issues there. The sled motor should cause this thing to move one way or the other. Ooh. Nothing. And I'm getting, yeah, massive current draw, so uh, it might be seized. It does not want to move. In fact, yeah, the uh, worm gear doesn't want to turn either. The drawer's currently closed, so you wouldn't expect anything to be stopping that. There wouldn't be a break or anything on it, but um, yeah, that, that does not want to move. So I think our best bet is to try and get this motor out, which might be fun. Easier than I thought. Let's see if we can move that sled now. Oh yes, that moves easily. No problem there. Looks like we have a seized motor. So there is a part number, but that is all she wrote. So uh, let's see. Oh yeah, that's that doesn't want to move. Let's remove this tiny little belt. Oh, it's freed up. It feels smooth, but... Uh, Takes quite a bit of force to actually turn it. Let's give it a bit more power. See if that just might have freed it up. Ooh. <laughs> it moved for a second and now it's stuck again. The power supply is just going into overcurrent mode. Yeah. It occasionally turns, but it really doesn't want to. Let's go a little bit further and take out these two screws. Hopefully I can get some oil in there somewhere. There we go. Might have to remove this little gear here to get to the other screw. I don't want to accidentally break this thing. That would suck. Definitely feels pretty stiff. All right, let's see if we can get a tiny drop of oil down past the shaft. Ooh, feels a bit better. We'll get a tiny drop of oil in the rear. If it'll go down. I think I managed to get some oil down in there, so I'm gonna connect this up to three volts and just let it run for a little bit. Uh, it's a bit tricky to clip anything on, so I might just solder some, where are those resistor legs? They'll do. There we go, just give us something to clip onto. It's running, it sounds all right. It's drawing about 12 milliamps at three volts, so uh, I'm just gonna let that sit while I go grab something to eat and 
Come back, see if it's still running. All right, we are back and it is still running. It's still silent and current drawers remained around the same. So that's a good sign. Let's just see if it gets noisy when I tilt it upside down. I don't know. Looking good. So uh, I'll get this reinstalled. I won't worry about cleaning up any of the uh, mechanism just yet or re-lubing anything. I think just having this working might be enough to get some more signs of life out of this thing. Um, pretty much because it can't move the laser lens back to track one. It's not going to activate that sensor and therefore it's not even going to bother trying to read this. So with any luck, we might get some more success now that this is done. And uh, if not, we can continue poking at it. So let me get all this reinstalled and we'll try it out. Okay, I think I managed to get it reassembled properly, so let's plug this stuff back in and give it a quick test. I haven't put the uh, spindle cover back on yet, I just want to see what the laser is actually going to do first. Here we go. Oh yes, that is a good sign. The laser moved in and it did a little bob up and down, so it's looking for a disc. Let's put the cover back on and throw a disc in. Right, hopefully this is going to eject properly. All right, I think I got that right. Let's see what happens. We're spinning. And we have a table of contents. Oh, I love how quick this thing is. And it appears to be playing. Sweet. Let's see if it's producing any audio. Now, of course, I'll only be able to play a few seconds of this, but we'll at least be able to tell if it's working or not. we're good. Somebody get me a sketchbook. It appears to have no problem seeking out to the final track. Nice. Yeah, the tray doesn't seem very smooth going in and out, so uh, it probably does need some fresh grease. But uh, I didn't want to go into all that before we actually had some proper signs of life out of this thing. And now that we do, uh, I guess I'm going to pull half of it apart again. Before I do that, let's try it with a burnt CD. Now, I actually had a look around it and I don't actually have any burnt CD audio anymore. So uh, we're going to try it with a PS1 game because some of these are likely to have an audio track or two on them. All right, well, it looks like I don't have any burnt audio CDs, but it has no problems reading the table of contents on those things. So I think it's working with uh, burnt CDs as well, which is a good sign for one of these older players. So nothing too exciting about this job. Just pretty much look for anywhere where there was old lube, clean it off and apply some fresh stuff. So there's a little bit up the back here, as we can see, and uh, a little bit along this gear rail here. And there's a bit hiding under here. So I'll get cleaning. Well, apparently it was going to be that boring. Even the overhead camera just went, nah, I'm good. Anyway, uh, we have a bunch of dirty Q-tips and hopefully a freshly lubricated CD mechanism. So let's give it a try. Okay. Oh yes, much better. Smooth. and it still appears to work. Cool. All right, uh, I think one other thing I wanna do is obviously give this thing a good clean because it's a little bit filth, so let's get into that. Little bit of window cleaner to start with. Right, I think that'll do. I'm not trying to convince anyone that it's brand new or anything, just trying to make it look like it's at least been loved. So um, I think that is it for this one. I kind of expected to break out the oscilloscope and start looking at RFI patterns and things, but apparently we didn't need to. So uh, I think we might revisit this machine, see if we can get digital audio out of it, um, and maybe look at, I don't know, checking some of the capacitors in this thing, because I haven't done that yet. Uh, but for now, it seems to work and I'm happy with that. So um, that is going to be it for this one. Thank you all for watching. A huge thanks to the people that support the channel on Patreon. If you want to do the same, links to that are in the video description. And um, yeah, that's it from me. So hopefully I'll catch you in the next one. Bye. Don't